Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Thermal Expansion. Today we're going to be covering a whole lot of augments and specializations. So augments and specializations are uh, kind of upgrades that you can add on to different devices. Uh, for example, if you've upgraded a machine uh, to something better than its basic version, you'll have access to an augmentation area where you can then insert different uh, augments and specializations. Specializations are usually limited to uh, one. The regular augments uh, that are not specializations, you usually can stack multiple in there. So therefore you can have some benefits and some uh, stackables depending upon what they are. So let's start off with this one here, a nullification chamber. Recipe is just some invar, lava bucket, and some glass of some sort. Uh, you put that in something uh, that has a secondary output. If you look here, it says destroys excess secondary outputs. The key word here is excess. You notice I have 64 sawdust. If I make more, then it will actually not because, well, it can't. There, there's no space in here, and therefore... It currently is enabled, so it should be running. Now, if I put this augment in here, it should therefore eliminate any excess versions, and it will just constantly keep making more until its space is run out, or you have it piped out in a different manner. But it will destroy excess stuff so that you can constantly keep making more. Uh, but you will still have at least one output type uh, sitting in there, which you can always, you know, pipe them out different areas and so on. Next up, I've got an auxiliary sieve. Uh, now this one here, uh, the recipe is a bunch of bronze, redstone servo, and some uh, rock wool of some sort. And of course the servo is just redstone and, and uh, iron. But uh, the idea behind this one is that it increases the chance of a secondary uh, byproduct. Now it, it doesn't increase it in, in some ways that you might think. For instance, uh, with coal ore into pulverized coal. If I look up this recipe here, uh, so I click show recipe, for instance here, you'll see coal ore will get me three coal and a 25% chance of pulverized coal, which can then further be used in other recipes or, uh, you know, methods. But the idea here is that this augment will allow you to increase that chance a bit. Now, I'm in my experiments, now this may be subject uh, to some inaccuracies, but in my uh, testing, I was finding that by adding one of these, you'll increase the percentage of the percent by about 25%. So if I have a, a chance of getting a secondary output of, let's say, cinnabar from uh, an, an ore that's only like 5%, Adding this in, you'll add in 25% more of the 5%. So if you add in four of these, you might uh, increase the output by a total of 10%, you know, and that's a chance of 10% increase. So it's not really going to do that much. So if you max it out with four of these, you have the potential to double the uh, percent chance. So in this case, uh, if I were to, uh, you know, get 25%, Flick this lever here. This one is hooked up with uh, regular stuff. It, it, I think these already actually did work. I, I just turned it off earlier. But uh, this one here doesn't have any. You see I got about three of them. This one here I got about 11. Now remember these are percentage chance of getting about 25% of getting uh, pulverized coal. So it, it kind of did a little bit more than doubling in this case of the percent chance there. But uh, I think this one also was a little bit low. I should have gotten a lot more in this situation. But you get the idea. It, it, the augmentation is just designed to help increase this. You really won't see much results. But if you have extra slots and you don't really need anything extra in there, and you are looking for more secondary output from uh, your stuff there, then I don't see why not to, to add in a, one or two of these extras just to increase your secondary output percentages. Now here we have the auxiliary reception coil. This one here is made with some gold, redstone reception coil, and redstone. Very basic, and it's very necessary in a lot of machines. It will increase the maximum power usage, but it also will increase the processing speed of most machines that it's in, inserted into. Uh, for instance, I have a basic redstone furnace here with no augments and uh, a pile of pulverized gold. Then I have one that has been upgraded with a, a resonant conversion kit. So it's a resonant version. Let me get rid of this here. Uh, in here, and it has similar amounts, no augmentations. Then I have the third one here, which has also been upgraded to resonant with the same gold and four of these reception coils. Now, if I stand on here, this should activate all three of them at once. 
and we'll start with the one on the right here. You can see it is just pumping through these. You know, it's really, really fast. If I look on this one here, it's going fast, but it's not going nearly as fast as this one. I mean, heck, it's already halfway through the stack. And you can see that the one without augmentations is only just now getting through about a quarter. This one here is <laughs> with the basic setup, of course, just for comparison's sake, it is just, you know, kind of slow. But you get the idea that these can really, really do a lot of good. But uh, they are going to use up a lot more power. Now, in this case, you can see here it's maximum power 300 RF per tick. This one here, maximum power 60 RF per tick. And th these are both resonant ones. It's just that it's going to uh, consume a lot more power, but it's also going to move a lot faster. So if you have a lot of uh, power per tick or even just power stored in your system, then this can really speed things along, uh, assuming that you're able to keep up with your power demands. Now we're going to go over into some of the dynamos. We have here an excitation field limiter. A lot of these are very confusing. If you just hold over it and hit shift, dynamos advanced throttle. So this one is not a specialization. It just says dynamos. It would actually say specialization as a heads up. But this one here, it prevents RF loss due to flux coil saturation. Often these will be very explanatory in how they function. In this case, it's a bit confusing. But if you are familiar with this, let me uh, uh, grab a bit here. If I grab this excitation field limiter, you notice here it's actually sh stopped at the top. I have something in here that it can burn up. It has liquid. And it should feasibly just constantly keep burning these, even if energy is not needed. If I pull that out, it will then start using some of this power, and it will start burning more of these this rosin, eventually filling it up completely and therefore not needing, uh, you know, and it will just burn through this entire stack of rosin. If I put this in here, it will stop that. It will then finish what it's doing here, burning up the one that it had. It might even just pause it. And over time, it will actually just stop at about the 90% area here. So it will help prevent wasted, uh, you know, product going into your uh, dynamos or things of that nature that uh, it, it will... Uh, do. So that's that's basically it's just going to stop constantly burning products up and it will take up one slot in there but it's very very handy for uh, just you know not constantly wasting your uh, material. And of course the uh, how to make this is just some lead nuggets, electrum and glass. So it's really cheap. All right, over here we have a fuel catalyzer. This one is really, really handy indeed. It's made with some lead ingots and a redstone conductance coil plus some glowstone dust. And this one is going to uh, increase the efficiency. You'll get more power out of the fuel that you use. So in this case, uh, let me put this back. In this case, uh, you see here I've got rosin. Usually rosin will get you about 8,000 RF when being used in a steam dynamo without any other, you know, benefits or bonuses or anything like that. Now, in this case, I have four of these fuel catalyzers in here, and one of these rosin, plus water, of course, was able to get me about one and a half times that amount. Uh, as you can see here, I got about 12,836. Now, that's, it, it's never going to be exactly the same in there, but it got quite a bit of RF uh, from that. So each one of these on here I think is going to add uh, a percentage on top of uh, how much you are burning. So if you want to increase your fuel efficiency, then this is definitely a good add-on for you. Now there is ways of uh, enhancing that even further. So for instance, if you're using these in combination with other stuff, you might be able to uh, increase the amount of power per tick as well as the uh, power gained per item used. Now let's move over to the auxiliary transmission coil. Uh, this one here is actually going to increase power generation or power per tick. So you're going to get a lot more power as it's needed. Uh, now the recipe for that is just silver, redstone transmission coil, and some redstone. And if you combine this with a fuel catalyzer, you can get a really nice benefit. Now in this case, uh, rosin, uh, the same thing being tossed in here with some water, got 4,800. So you can see it's not very efficient. But look at this, 600 RF per tick versus... Uh, this one here, which is 120 RF per tick. Of course, these are resonant versions right now. But, I mean, it, it's definitely a really good thing. And if you uh, kind of have these, these, or, you know, you mix and match your fuel catalyzers and your auxiliary transmission coils, you can further up your uh, RF per tick uh, from this 120 to be somewhere in between the 600 and 120, and you'll still be able to obtain at least the uh, 8,000 or maybe more, uh, depending upon the setup that you choose, because you can obviously stack these in there and use multiples of them.
Now let's go into the transmission coil ducting. Uh, this one here is uh, just made from some lead nuggets, copper, and uh, you know some glass. It, it's nothing really fancy, but it allows insertion and extraction through the coil. The coil is this red thing on the front here that's lit up. That thing usually shoots out power from it. Now if you insert one of these uh, into, let's say, a steam dynamo, I'm actually going to grab one here, and I put this on here. You can see that I have a hopper hooked up to this, uh, the front of this coil right now. There's nothing in it, uh, and this is a steam dynamo, so it will take uh, some kind of fuel. Let's put uh, a, a few of these in here. I can put it in a bunch of rosin. Then I also have water on this side here, which is not currently going in uh, unless I actually tell it to, which currently it's, it's set to input. It will feed in through the side, but I'm demonstrating that this is going to go through the front. Uh, so first, let me install this uh, this augment here, and therefore you can see that the rosin is coming in, just like that. Not a problem. It came in through the hopper, through the front of the coil. Now if I take my crescent hammer, and I rotate this so that it is currently facing, there we go, this in the uh, water input, you can see that if I click on here, it will also allow the water through there. And if you rotate it, it will also then uh, push the power back out through this same spot. But it's just a demonstration of how this works. And here we have the sapling infuser. Uh, the sapling infuser is made with aluminum plate, signalum gear, redstone servo, piston, erothium dust. It's, it's not, not cheap stuff. This is really rather difficult to make. Um, at least compared to a lot of others. But what it works in uh, the sapling infuser works in the phytogenic insulator. And what this allows you to do, if you put it in here, is to create more trees and uh, wood in combination with phytogrow. So if you look in here, allows for trees to be grown. So usually the phytogenic insulator with phytogrow of some sort, there's uh, different kinds, plus some kind of food product or something of that like will create more of them. In this case, you can create your own tree farm in a way. But with your basic phytogrow, it's only going to be a 50% chance of getting a sapling. So you're going to also uh, find a way of uh, making this at least a rich phytogrow. Uh, combined with a sapling should get you lots of wood and you can use that wood for making coal for uh, you know taking out the fluids and uh, you know using those as fuel source all sorts of things uh, grinding them up for sawdust or just needing them to uh, build things with but it's a really handy way of making a, an internal tree farm uh, provided that you have enough automation to support it. And you may even need uh, some outside mods in order to accomplish that at this point. But uh, perhaps that may change in the future. And here I'm going to get into some of the specializations. And these typically mean that you can only have one specialization per machine involved. Uh, there are, there may be a few exceptions and they often can be combined with your regular augments, uh, but always they may have some restrictions on them uh, depending upon the machine that you're using it in. Now, a boiler conversion. If I take something like a steam dynamo and I insert a boiler conversion, it will therefore turn this into a uh, steam producing dynamo instead of power. You notice over here it says millibuckets per tick, 400 millibuckets of steam per tick. So that's kind of how that works at this point. Now, if I were to take this out, it would then turn into a normal steam dynamo. But for now, I want it to actually produce that steam. Uh, so let's turn this on, and I currently have it hooked up to a tank, uh, which you should see is going to be getting a whole bunch of steam. There we go. It has been producing steam. And it will start burning the coal in here as well, and you'll see it's, it's just going to constantly keep burning it up. So we're going to want to make use of that. Now if I right-click here, it will then fill into this steam dynamo, which you notice now has steam in it. And it will therefore start producing some... Uh, power if you wait long enough here there we go you can see it's producing a lot of power it's using uh, about you know maximum 240 megabytes per tick or mega millibuckets not megabytes millibuckets per tick and it will produce a bunch here and this one has a uh, uh, another augment in it the uh, turbine conversion which recipe for that's copper plates redstone conductance coil iron gear and some redstone it, it's it's not too bad the boiler conversion uh, is going to be copper plate iron gear bucket and hardened uh, some kind of hardened glass and redstone so they're rather medium to light recipes and you can get a lot of uh, you know 
RF out of this just with these two conversions you'd have to have one pumping into the other uh, and this one now uses steam is what this is greatly increases power generation but it, steam must be provided from an external source so this this version of a steam dynamo with the uh, turbine conversion in it won't even work unless only steam is being pumped in uh, and then this one of course here you need to have some kind of uh, other product being uh, solid fuel plus water being pumped in in order for it to actually produce the steam there will no longer be RF produced. Let's move on down the line to something a little bit more interesting we've got our redstone furnace it has three different specializations we've got the trivection chamber. Uh, which actually let me click in here we've got uh, the you get to gain additional food when cooking. Uh, the recipe for this is relatively basic copper gear silver plate redstone conductings coil bricks and redstone uh, so i recommend you do this early on if you want to save yourself a lot of time and hassle with making food and that is for instance i put a potato in here i cook it i get two baked potatoes that there you go you, you get additional food and redstone furnaces are already ideal for cooking food it uses very little power uh, now the uh, pyrolytic conversion. Uh, this one here, it's they're all, they all sound a bit confusing, but they're not that bad in most cases. Uh, this one here, you get to gain an additional ingot when smelting ore. So for instance, if I put a copper ore in here, I get two copper ingots. Of course, I won't get any side products or anything like that, but it is a good uh, entry-level item here. And the recipe for it is bronze gear, invar plates, redstone conductance coil, pyrothium dust, and pistons. Oh, that, that's, that's quite a bit of stuff, actually, in order to get that going. But it is ore doubling using a redstone furnace. So it, it's... It's pretty good. It doesn't require any other materials. You don't have to also have sand being fed into it, uh, like in a smeltery. You don't have to have. Uh, you, you don't have to do a pulverizer where that's multiple steps, where it pulverizes into two and then feed it into a redstone furnace. It's just a one-step thing. So it's pyrolytic conversion. Pretty simple. Flux anodizers. This here uh, is a copper plate, invar gear, redstone servo, nether brick, and pulverized charcoal. This is going to allow you to turn things like coal into coal coke uh, and get a creosote oil uh, byproduct uh, from it. Uh, as you can see here, allows for pyrolysis and creosote production. Uh, only certain items can be processed. Processing speed is greatly reduced, so that this takes a, a, a bit of time, but it is still faster than some coke uh, production methods. But of course, uh, as before, only one uh, specialization may be used. And if you look here, you can also do things like a cactus into charcoal will get you some creosote, uh, hay bales into charcoal, and so on. We've got a few other items here uh, that can also be turned into charcoal and get you some creosote oil in your production. And here we have a tectonic initiator for a pulverizer. Uh, this one here, uh, the, it, the recipe is going to be signalum gear, bronze plates, redstone servos, a bunch of uh, hardened glass and petrothium dust. It's rather expensive to do so, uh, but it's going to allow ore tripling. Uh, look, one copper equals three pulverized copper, and then of course you can smelt those up, but uh, it also gives you tectonic, uh, but it's at the cost of tectonic petrothium. In this case, a uh, hundred millibuckets, which is like uh, one-tenth of a bucket, will allow you to do so. So you actually have to create tectonic petrothium. If you see here, increases yield from ores. Tectonic petrothium must be supplied. So it is a way of tripling your ores, but at the cost of uh, creating tectonic petrothium. And tectonic petrothium is not an easy thing to produce, uh, at least not early early game, and that's petrothium dust in a magma crucible uh, will we'll make petronic, uh, tectonic petrothium. Then you've got a resin funnel. This one here is a little bit more fun. Uh, if you look here, the recipe for it is going to be copper plate, tin gear, redstone servo, buckets, and redstone. In it will allow for fluids to be extracted from logs. So for instance, I'm in a sawmill. I put a, a oak wood log in here, you'll get six spruce, or so, sorry, I've got oak in here for a reason, but if I put a spruce wood log in here, I would get six spruce wood planks, uh, get a bit of sawdust in there, and I get resin output. Now here's the thing though, it's a little bit iffy. If I pull out the spruce wood, uh, and you notice it's on regular, here we go. Uh, if I pull out the spruce wood, it's going to do that, and it didn't produce anything. Why not? It, because the, the oak wood produces sap, and the spruce wood produces resin. So if you have something in there that is not the same stuff, it's not going to produce anything. Just a heads up. But this is another way of getting resin or sap as needed. Next we've got pyro concentrator. <laughs> in an induction smelter. 
This here is made with signalum gear, redstone conductance coil, nickel plate, and pyrothium, pyrothium dust, and uh, some kind of hardened glass. Uh, will allow you to, if you insert blazing pyrothium in an induction smelter, uh, so that you can increase the yield from ores further. So you can get your ore tripling plus that secondary output in an induction smelter. So this is uh, probably the, the way to go if you're going to be doing ore tripling. So you can get three copper ingots and rich slag potentially as an output, uh, this is a possibility, uh, from one copper ore and a bit of sand, which of course you can make sand very easily. Now moving over here to a phytogenic insulator, we have mycelium substrate, nether substrate, and ender substrate. These here allow you to create different things. If you look here, uh, this augment, which uh, this is a specialization, so you can only have one in there at a time, but it allows for non-standard crops to be grown, uh, suitable for fungi and slime saplings. It, it does say slime, but that's for like Tinker's Construct slime saplings. Fungi means any kind of mushrooms. In this case, you put in one mushroom plus phytogrow equals multiple mushrooms, depending upon the phytogrow that you have included in there. So that's what that allows. Uh, with the uh, nether version, Nether substrate allows you to uh, kind of create more nether wart. Uh, with your ender substrate allows you to create from chorus flowers. You can get chorus plants and an output of chorus flowers. So, of course, Phytogrow can change the uh, quantities of these, but that is what this would allow you to produce in this case. Recipe for the mycelium substrate, of course, is going to be lead, copper gear, redstone servo, redstone, and mycelium. Well, a little bit more challenging of an item to typically obtain uh, using some kind of silk touch. And the nether substrate is going to be tin plate, silver gear, redstone servo, soul sand, and glowstone. And then, of course, your ender substrate is going to be nickel gear, silver plate, redstone servo, and stone, and cryothium dust. Now let's just work our way around a little bit further. I have a flux linkage concentrator. Of course, who wouldn't have one of these things on them at all times? Me. All right. But <laughs> the cost of this is electrum gear, redstone conductance coil, silver plates, lead ingots, and redstone. Uh, what this basically allows you to do is uh, recharging items to be charged very rapidly. Now I have, to best demonstrate this, a resonant flux capacitor that is empty. Plus I've got a creative one. It's not going to exceed the in and out of the uh, product being charged. So therefore, you know, this will allow, uh, what is it? It can receive 50,000 RF per tick. And uh, yeah, that means this is going to drain very quickly, and this flux capacitor is only going to uh, allow it to send 12,500. So it's actually only going to receive 12,500 because that's all I can get this uh, creative capacitor to do. But if I turn this on, you will notice it drained that instantly, <laughs> and it is currently just pumping this in here at maximum speed. Now if I pull that out, You'll notice it, it is slowed down considerably. It is just 1.82. It's actually regenerating this faster than it is that. It, it's very slow. 1.83, 1.84. It's just taking a bit of time at this at this rate. But once again, put this back in, and it starts filling up much, much faster. So that's basically the idea here. If you just want to uh, charge things up quickly and you have better uh, resources than the limitation of 12,500 RF per tick, or that's perfectly acceptable for you, then this is going to be the augment for you. Now we've got a numismatic press. This here, I think I kind of touched on this before. Uh, the recipe for it is invar, electrum plates, uh, redstone servo, emeralds, and glowstone dust um, will allow you to mint your ingots into coins. Uh, it's pretty cool, and then you can use those coins for either trading or for power uh, as you see fit. And then all you have to do is click the mode here, and it'll do press, storage, or mint once you've inserted this uh, augment. Now the pyroconvective loop uh, for the magma crucible. This one here is pretty cool. Uh, if you look at the recipe here, it's invar, piston, redstone conductance coil, nether brick, and pyrothium dust. Uh, this one will allow you to greatly increase lava production speed. So if you remember, let me click this, uh, you see here that this, this magma crucible is currently turning this cobblestone into lava. If I pull that out, you notice it, it kind of stopped. That's because this is the normal speed. So once I put this back in, it then goes much faster and actually finishes it. So it's it's just, uh, it's a godsend. If you really want to create your magma uh, faster, that's, that's actually going to allow you to create it at a decent rate. Now I've got a permafrost compressor. This here, when you insert your permafrost compressor, it will allow the creation of packed ice. Uh, the recipe for it is 
packed ice, so you have to have it in order to create it. Invar plates, redstone servo, copper gear, and redstone. Uh, you put this in here, and if I lift this out, put it in the bottom, you notice, look here at the packed ice here. It turns into ice, packed ice, ice, packed ice. That simple. And then it will allow you to create it. Just need to turn it on, and I'll start making you some packed ice. And then we have our pyroclastic injection uh, in the igneous extruder, which the igneous extruder actually has several specializations you can choose in here. Uh, this one here means that you don't have to use water anymore. Well, once I pull that out, you see that the water meter is there. I put that in. It doesn't need any water at all. And it will uh, simply make the different items as before using the same quantities, uh, if any at all. Then I have these other options over here. We've got our andesitic subduction. We've got our diuretic subduction and our granitic subduction. And to give you an idea of how these work, basically they'll replace the stone equivalent in here with one of those three types, your uh, granite, uh, andesite, or diorite. To give an example of the recipes, invar, copper, redstone servo, and of course the different stone type at the bottom. And let's finish things off with some more dynamo specializations, like the lapidary calibration. If I have a numismatic dynamo, and I insert this in here, it will allow me to not only use the coins and emeralds in it, it will also allow me to use things like jewels, uh, diamonds, lapis, prismarine, uh, nether quartz, and of course your standard emerald as before, and it will allow you to create some power. So by putting that in there, turn that on, it will use it as some kind of power source and start generating RF from it. Recipe for that, of course, is a signalum gear, electrum plate, redstone conductance coil, emerald, and erothium dust. Then we've got our elemental catalyzer. This works in a reactant dynamo. If you look here, it says greatly increases power generation and efficiency, but only elemental reactions can be performed. What it means by elemental, uh, elemental reactions is anything that is to do with these little guys over here that we've got. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember them or not, but uh, they, they basically will drop any kind of, uh, like your petrothium, erothium, uh, pyrothium, and cryothium dusts. Uh, you can, of course, create those, but in order for this to actually work, this will require one of those dusts as some type of fuel, uh, and then you can, therefore, also add that in. But it will also require, of course, the zephyrian erothium, uh, the... Uh, Zephyrian erothium in this case. I have petrothium in there. Let me grab a bucket of that and then I could just add this in. You can see that it starts working and it will start consuming that and creating a lot more power uh, from those. So it is something to take into consideration. It will be a lot to set up but it can be very beneficial with the amount of power that it can generate. Then we've got our closed loop cooling good for a compression dynamo, which a compression dynamo can accept two different specializations. If you see here, I have some tree oil in there. This means that you no longer need coolant for operation. Well, coolant added at least. The recipe for this is going to be invar, tin plates, redstone conductance coil, some kind of hardened glass, and cryothium dust. It's a little bit expensive to do so, but you no longer need to pump in any kind of coolant. But in here, if I don't have anything in there, if you notice, put this on, Nothing's happening. No power is generated. I do need to actually have coolant in there for it to work. Uh, so once you've got that in place, you've got your closed-up cooling system. It will use a little bit of water or whatever your coolant is that's in there in order to actually start processing this and generating power from it. But it's a coolant loop, so it's just going to constantly keep reusing the fluid that's in there. So you do have to have some to start with. It's kind of a primer. But uh, after that, then you're good to go. Ignition plugs in your compression dynamo allows you to greatly increase power generation and efficiency, but only refined fuel can be used. And by that, it means, well, refined fuel, uh, which you have to actually make through refinement, etc. I'm not going to go over the whole idea of how to make refined fuel, but for instance, 100 millibuckets of refined fuel, which is one tenth of a bucket, plus uh, I believe it was uh, 600 millibuckets of water, which is most of a bucket of water, Gave me about a quarter of a million RF. <laughs> it's quite efficient stuff. Uh, the recipe for this is signalum gear, copper plate, redstone conductance coil, some kind of hardened glass, and pyrothium dust. And an isentropic reservoir to finish things off in the magmatic dynamo. This here the recipe is made with signalum gear, invar plate, redstone conductance coil, hardened glass, and cryothium dust. It's not cheap, but it can be really, really cool. You know that you can make power from magma already. In this case, uh, one bucket of water plus a bit of lava has given me about 120 
thousand RF from an isentropic reservoir, which it does require coolant. So if I pull this off, you'll notice that the water reservoir totally disappears. I put that back in, the water is gone. I have to add that in manually and then turn it on in order for it to actually start producing the power. And there you go. That's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this bit by bit on thermal expansion. Uh, I look forward to covering all sorts of more bit by bits in the future. Perhaps I might even touch more on this one again as time goes. So if you enjoy, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, spread the mischief to others if you think they'll enjoy this uh, kind of content too. Until next time, folks, I'll see ya.